Hey guys, I want to welcome you back to the channel. Uh, what we've got here today uh, are three of my uh, most popular and at least for me, my most liked handguns. We've got the Glock 19, uh, we've got the Glock 26, and we've got the Glock 43. These are all chambered in 9mm. Uh, you know, I really like them. So what we're going to do here is kind of take them apart uh, and clean them. I figured, you know, there's a lot going on right now with the coronavirus, uh, the pandemic. Uh, ammo is really hard to get, at least in the state that I live in, uh, here in New York. I've got a whole separate video on the ammo shortage and my thoughts on it. I'm actually going to make a follow-up uh, because I've been doing a little more research and I've got some more opinions on, uh, you know, what's going to be hard to find next. Uh, what other gun pieces, accessories are going to be hard to find. And I'm actually encountering some shortages right now. So, uh, you know, do subscribe and like if you enjoy this so you get notified. Uh, and that video will hopefully be up in the next day or two. But like I said, uh, with all that's going on, I'm not really going to the range right now. So I figured I want to clean uh, my three uh, most popular firearms and usually the ones that I carry on my person uh, and just keep them in like a very good standby, clean, ready to go condition. Uh, God forbid there should be a crisis or, you know, something that <clears throat> requires me to, to have my firearm at the ready. Uh, so. Without delay, I've got some items here on the table. Uh, we definitely don't need a magazine uh, to clean the, clean the guns. Uh, what we've got here is a boar snake. Uh, this is really good, you know, at the end, you know, you want to just kind of get all that gunk out of the barrel. Uh, Ballastol, for those of you that have not heard of this before, I actually uh, picked this up from Hickok45. Uh, he's a great guy, uh, and he recommends this, so I've been using it, you know, for quite a long time, and I, I really do like it. Uh, I've got another brush here, and I've just got my basic uh, cleaning kit that I think I picked up many years ago. Uh, there's not a lot involved here. We're just going to take the firearms apart. Uh, we're going to take the slide off. We're going to take the barrel out. Uh, and that's really it. We're going to clean the frame. We're going to clean the barrel, uh, the slide. Uh, maybe I'll take the ejector out. I'm not sure. I, I cleaned those not that long ago. And I've got a couple of paper plates here because uh, I want to just kind of keep the pieces to each firearm. Uh, you know, together in the plate. I don't want to mix up springs or anything else because uh, then it's a real pain to put everything back together. Uh, and, you know, let's, let's just do it. All right, so we're going to start here with the Glock 19. Obviously, anything that you're cleaning, you want to make sure uh, is fully unloaded. So I know these firearms are unloaded, but we're going to do it again anyway for the sake of the video and for the sake of safety. First thing I'm going to do is pick up the 19. I'm going to drop the magazine. Uh, I'm going to make sure I clear the chamber. I'm going to do the same with the 26 and the same with the 43. Uh, for those of you that are new to firearms, and maybe this is your first video where you're kind of seeing how to break them down and clean them, uh, it's really not hard. This applies to all Glocks. It doesn't matter the, the caliber, it doesn't matter the magazine capacity, it, it full size, subcompact, Glocks are all the same. Uh, which is why I really like the Glock. If you master one of them, you've mastered all of them, at least in terms of functionality. Shooting, dynamics are going to be a little different, right, because the, the frames are different sizes, uh, you know, different lengths. Uh, you may have different sights if you change out the stock. But in terms of functionality, they're all the same. All right, so we've got the 19 here. I'm going to drop the magazine. That's out. Magazine's already empty. I'm just going to rack the slide back. You can see it's empty. And now, in a safe direction, I'm going to pull the trigger because while I may not agree with it, I do understand the mechanics of it. And in order to take the slide off, the trigger has to be depressed. So the trigger is now pulled. This is totally empty. Next up is going to be the Glock 26. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to hit the uh, release. And just, just so you guys know, because I've gotten some questions in the past, these are Talon grips uh, that I put on the Glock 26. These grips are absolutely amazing. I'm going to do another video uh, pretty soon on the Glock 26. Uh, and, you know, I used to hate this firearm. I almost sold it. And now it is one of my favorites uh, that I also regularly carry, uh, mostly because of these grips. So, like I said, please like and subscribe, uh, and you'll get the notification when I do this video. I'm going to talk a lot about these grips, um, how I installed them, what I think about them, uh, and why this gun went from being hated to one of my favorites. Uh, but that magazine is out. Let's rack the slide. Empty. Point it in a safe direction. Pull the trigger. Same here with the Glock 43. This magazine is out. Racking the slide. Depress the trigger. 
all three of these are now empty. The next step, I want to separate the slide from the lower, or the upper from the lower. Uh, and to do that on any of these glocks, they're all the same. I hope you can see this on the camera. Uh, if you can't, uh, take my word for it. On either side here, there's these two little, uh, I don't know what you want to call them, pins or levers. They have a couple little notches and they just slide down. That's all they do is they go up and they go down. And basically what you need to do, there's one on this side as well, you need to pull them both down, this one and this one, at the same time. But you can only do that when the slide is back just a little bit. So the way I do this, and hopefully it'll work for you guys, is I take my right hand and I put the firearm in my right hand like this. And using these fingers, I grab onto the slide and I pull it back just a little bit, just like that, just a small amount. And I, I really hope the camera is picking this up. And that small amount is all you need. Then you take your left hand, your index finger, and your thumb, and you pull those two pins down. So I'm going to pull this back just a little bit. I'm using these two fingers. I pulled the pins down, and now I just push the slide forward, and it comes right off. So it's really simple to do that, to take this apart. Now I'm just going to take the spring. I've just pulled it out right there. I'm going to place it in there. The barrel has just slid right out. I'm also going to place it, I don't know if you can see the plate. I've got a plate here. Uh, and that's it. Uh, now I'm looking at the slide here. I can see there's, there's some debris, there's some dirt. Uh, this firearm, the Glock 43, is relatively new. It does not have a lot of range time on it. It's still got some of the gold grease from the factory. So this is really not that dirty. But I'm going to clean it anyway. I am not going to take out the extractor. I'm not going to take out the firing pin. I'm not going to take off the plate. Because uh, like I said, it is relatively clean. Uh, so we'll just place that in here. Next up, I'm just going to take the frame and kind of just put it back over here. Next up is the Glock 26. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to take my right hand. I'm going to kind of grab onto the frame like this, just enough so I can pull this slide just a little bit. I'm going to take my index finger and my thumb, and I'm going to pull these two tabs right here and right here at the same time once I've pulled the slide back just a little bit. Once I've done that, the slide just goes forward. I can take the spring out. I can take the barrel out, and I've got the slide. And as you can see, I've already got some uh, soot, some garbage, some gunpowder on my hands, so we know this isn't totally clean. Um, this one particularly is not clean. I haven't cleaned this in quite a while. Uh, it actually looks pretty dirty. I don't know if you guys can see that on the camera. You may not be able to, uh, but it's pretty dirty. And then last but not least, one of my favorites here, the Glock 19. I'm going to do the same thing. So that's broken down as well. Uh, one thing I'm noticing in here, looks like there's a lot of little metal filings. Uh, and I'm going to chalk that up to the ammo that I was using. Uh, I've actually noticed that on all three of these. Uh, I had bought some ammo at Dick's. I know that's a bad move. Believe me, I'm not a fan of Dick's either because of their uh, firearms policies. However, I will say where I live uh, in New York, there's really not a Walmart uh, within, you know, at least an hour of where I live. Uh, so my options for getting ammo are, are kind of challenging. Uh, if I don't go to a big box store like Dick's where I can get, you know, Remington or Winchester White Box, uh, my only other options are go to go to some small time uh, gun shops and I'm going to pay significantly more. Uh, or I order online and I have to have that shipped to a licensed FFL here in New York, uh, which is primarily what I do. However, as I've kind of addressed in my ammo shortage video and I'm going to talk about in my next one, uh, there's almost none to be had right now, at least not from the regular sites that I go to, like Target Sports USA, ammo to go Lucky Gunner, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, it's getting kind of hard here, uh, at least in New York State, to get ammo. But different topic for a different video. All right, so now we've got uh, all the pieces separated. So I'm just going to, for the moment, the frames have to be cleaned as well. I'm going to place them kind of off to the side here, and I'm going to start here with my 19. And I've got the 26, then I've got the 43. Uh, and I want to just take some ballistol. I want to spray these guys down. I just want to soak them in the cleaner and let them sit here for a minute. Again, there's more that can be taken apart here. You can take off the slide cover, at which point you know you can get the firing pin out. You can uh, get the extractor out. You can basically take apart the rest of the upper. It's very easy to do. Um, 
I may do it. Well, let's see. Let's just uh, just kind of spray it down for the moment here. I'm just kind of spraying the parts. I suggest you do this with an open window. I've got a couple of windows open here. Uh, I've sprayed inside the barrel. I'm spraying the slide. I'm just going to let this soak for a minute or two. And you don't need to go crazy here. Glocks can, uh, they can work for years without being cleaned. Trust me when I tell you that. Don't ask me how I know, but trust me. Uh, but you should, you should clean them. Uh, let's see. You know, I may take the firing pin out of the 19 just to show you guys. Uh, it's a little bit of a pain. You need to kind of pull this back. Forgive me on that. It's actually my hands are super slippery right now. So it's not that easy to do. All right, I'm gonna need a tool because uh, like I said, my hands are super slippery from all the cleaner. Uh, so that's okay, we'll hold off on that for the moment. I probably should have had some paper towel here. Um, but while this is kind of soaking, I'm just gonna take out some pads here. So I could push these through the barrel. We'll take the uh, we'll take the firing pin out and all the other pieces in just a moment. And go ahead and open up this brush. Now this is a bronze brush. You want to use something soft because you don't want to uh, damage the finish or scratch anything up. So right now, while everything is kind of just soaking, I'm just going to kind of agitate it back and forth. I want to break up any any grime, any particles that are stuck on here, maybe some brass. Oh, I for, uh, forgive me, I forgot to mention that. I was talking about dicks and uh, why I had to go there, uh, but I didn't finish my, my story. So I think some of those particles that I saw in here, some of that brass almost that looks like, might have been from the ammo. I had bought some dicks field and stream ammo, and I gotta be honest, that stuff was absolute garbage. I don't know what I was thinking. It was, you know, it was cheap, it was on sale, I think I paid nine something a box, uh, or maybe even eight something. And I thought, you know, what could be, what could be wrong with this? It's just some range ammo, absolute garbage. A lot of fail to fire, some stove pipes, uh, you name it. My my guns were all jamming up, and I really thought there was a problem with my guns. And I was, you know, I was like, wait a minute. I know I haven't cleaned these in a while, but I've never had these issues. And then all of a sudden it clicked. The only difference here, I was using that different ammo. So I immediately switched to some uh, Winchester white box that I had on me. Worked flawlessly, no issues at all. Uh, and I think that uh, ammo, that field and stream, I think it was made by Perfecta, uh, you know, for dicks or for field and stream. But and I'm not knocking them. Uh, I'm sure that they're probably a good brand, but maybe, maybe the quality just wasn't that good uh, that they sold to dicks. Maybe, you know, they, I don't know, didn't put as much powder in, didn't, uh, not quite sure, but I was not a fan at all. It was, uh, it was seriously problematic. Uh, jammed up my whole gun. All right, so what I'm doing here, I'm just kind of agitating all the pieces that I've taken apart. I'm just trying to knock off any, any debris, any powder, any unburnt powder. Uh, as you might be able to see from my hands and definitely in the plate here, that's a little dirty. I think the last time I cleaned uh, these firearms was maybe maybe about a year ago. Um, I hadn't shot them too much, obviously over the winter, uh, and I did have surgery last year, so I was out of commission for a little while, uh, unable to shoot. So it was, you know, a little challenging to be stuck at home and not able to shoot. Uh, but surgery went well. For anyone that's interested, I actually needed a heart valve replaced, um, and I'm pretty young to need that, but. Like I said, it went well. I'm out of the woods, uh, and I'm back to shooting. I'm definitely enjoying it. And it's nice to be back. I've not shot a shotgun, actually, since uh, heart surgery, but I'm almost 100% sure that I'm now strong enough uh, that I could do that without any potential damage. So right now, I'm just taking a, a rod here, and I'm just gonna take a couple of these patches. I just wanna push them through the barrel. I wanna see kinda what comes out. Uh, see how dirty this this might be. Uh, a 
little dirty. It wasn't that bad. Got my hand stuck on it there. And then we're going to take the boar snake as well. And we're going to shove the boar snake through here. And then we'll use the patches again to kind of dry everything, make sure that it's all uh, good to go. So I really I want to kind of emphasize that I don't want to mix up pieces. Yes, it can be figured out, uh, but I'd like to kind of keep everything separate. It just makes it a little bit easier. I'm going to go ahead and open up the boar snake now. And this is pretty easy to use. Uh, in my opinion, you should always go in one direction. So I'm just going to take this and kind of drop it through here. And now the boar snake itself, again, maybe hard to see on camera, it's got some, uh, I don't know if this is brass or copper, uh, bristles right here. And then it's just kind of pretty heavy duty uh, to put some pressure in there and clean out that barrel. So I'm just pulling it through all the way. So all the way through. And I'm just looking through the barrel right now. Uh, and it definitely looks a lot better. And I'm going in the direction that the bullet would be coming out of the barrel, from the back to the front. All right, so we've done this one twice. I'm just going to kind of put it aside here. And I'm going to move on now to the Glock 26 barrel and do the same thing. Just kind of pulling this through nice and easy. It's getting any of that garbage out of the barrel. Uh, I know you guys can't see this on camera, but I'm looking through the barrel, uh, and it is definitely looking nice and clean. I'm going to have to pause this video in a second because I do need a little bit of paper towel. Uh, that is the one item I forgot to kind of keep here on the table with me. I want to keep uh, all these parts nice and clean. I want to just dry them up and get all this ballastol off of them, uh, you know, when I'm all done here. And all this ballast oil that I sprayed all over everything, you know, it's great. It's, uh, it's going to clean it all up, lubricate everything. But I'm going to dry it off uh, because the Glock doesn't need all this lubrication. It's actually quite easy. Uh, you know, once you're all done, everything's clean, and you're reassembling it, uh, you just put minimal, minimal drops of oil on the slide. You do not need a lot at all. Uh, but like I said, I do want to kind of keep all this cleaned. I'm not going to be going to the range right now for a little while. Uh, I mean, I can't. I don't even think they're open. There's a lot of social distancing here uh, in New York. All right, so all the barrels are clean. The slides I have agitated and brushed a little bit, uh, and those are, are fairly clean as well. I'm just going to get a piece of paper towel, uh, kind of clean my hands off, and I'll be back in about one second on the video. It's going to be seamless, and then we're going to continue. back I got my uh, my hands cleaned up a little bit uh, I actually got a couple of more plates here so I want to transfer everything to some uh, some clean plates uh, just to kind of keep everything in order and again guys there is no right or wrong way uh, to do this in terms of actually cleaning the components um, you know you got to do what works best for you I'm going to put these plates in an order here with the 19, the 26, and the 43. That way I kind of know what goes to what because uh, it is easy to get mixed up. And as you might be able to see on this piece of paper towel, there's a lot of dirt coming off here from where I sprayed this with the ballastol and I let it kind of soak in for a while. Uh, and don't worry, I have not forgotten about the, the lower, about the, uh, the polymer piece. That uh, is definitely next. I'm just trying to clean this barrel a little bit. Get all the gunk off it, get off the, uh, the gunpowder uh, and any of the residue. You know what, one thing I forgot, I'm going to go ahead and grab uh, a Q-tip and I'll be right back once I all grab right, that. So I got a couple of Q-tips here uh, and all I'm doing with the Q-tips is I'm just kind of getting in these hard to reach places, uh, you know, on the barrel and then obviously later on on the slide as well uh, and just making sure that I'm Drying everything up, getting all the, uh, the ballast all off. I'm going to take another pad here. I'm just going to send it through the barrel. And that came out absolutely perfectly clean. So this barrel is good to go. I'm going to place that over here uh, in, the, in the plate. 
Next up, let's do the Glock 26 barrel. Let's get that cleaned uh, and out of the way. So as you guys can see, this is not that difficult of a process. Uh, you don't really want to rush it. I'm going to obviously kind of fast forward here on the, on the video and we'll cut back in a second uh, when we're working on the lower because I don't want to waste everybody's time sitting here cleaning uh, everything and make this like an hour long video. I want you guys to get the point of how to do this uh, for your firearms. So this barrel looks pretty clean as well. Uh, and, you know, it's not scientific here. Uh, we're not analyzing this under a microscope. But when you kind of rub the paper towel on it, you can see right away is this clean. We're going to take the pad. Again, just going to send this through the barrel. And that came out perfectly clean. That's from the boar brush, or the boar snake. Uh, so we know that, that this is, uh, is working. And then let's do the last barrel here. And then we're going to come right back. Uh, basically, the springs for all of these. I'm just going to take the paper towel and I'm going to clean everything. I'm going to get in there with the Q tip. Uh, I'm not going to show all of that on the camera. I think it's kind of repetitive and boring. Uh, but if you really, for whatever reason, want to see that, leave a comment and let me know. And I'm happy to do another video and film that, but I don't really think anybody cares about that piece. All right, so last barrel here for the Glock 43. Let's send the uh, send the pad through, and that came out clean as well. So I think we're uh, I think we're good here. All right, I'm going to now do the springs, and then we'll be right back and we'll uh, talk about the upper uh, hey guys, slide. So we're back uh, over here. We've got the barrels and the springs. They're all in the plates. They're all clean. They're good to go back in. Uh, on the 19 slide here, what I did, I needed uh, both my hands. Uh, I don't know if you can tell. Right here, you need to use a small tool to pull this all the way back, and then you can slide the plate cover off. Once this comes off, I mean, you're pretty much taking everything out. This is the firing pin uh, and the spring here. So you can clean this. Again, this is pretty clean. I had cleaned this uh, not that long ago. Uh, and then you can remove the extractor remove everything else here. We're just taking all these little pieces off. And forgive me, you would think that I have learned my lesson here. Uh, but my hands are incredibly slippery. Uh, yet again, because of all this ballastol. So that is out. And the extractor it's almost out if I can get my hands to be uh, a little less slippery here. There we go. So everything is out. Uh, the firing pin, the extractor, all the little pieces that hold it together, uh, and the slides. They're all here in the plate. Uh, what I'm going to do is just hit them really quick. A little ballast all again. Just going to let that soak for a minute. Uh, and then off camera, I'm going to do the same to each of these, clean them all up, and then we'll put them all back together, and then we'll work on the lower part uh, of the firearm. So again, just a quick review of the uh, top piece. Uh, we took the slide off, we took the barrel out, we took the spring out. On my 19, I took out the firing pin, the extractor, uh, and all the little uh, accessories that go along with that, and the back slide plate. Uh, I'm going to do the same to the 26 and the 43, clean all that up. We're going to put the slide all back together. And then we're going to tackle the lower part, uh, which is even easier uh, to clean because we're not taking that apart. We're just going to kind of hit it with a little ballastol, kind of agitate all the maybe unburnt gunpowder, clean it up, dry it up, uh, and put it together. So we'll be back in one second. Hey guys, welcome back. Um, so during that quick break, I finished cleaning all the parts. I actually cleaned the lowers. Uh, really easy to do. You just take your brush, you spray a little ballastol, you kind of agitate all the areas, get any unburnt gunpowder off any soot, you know, whatever. Take some paper towel, clean inside, clean inside, dry everything up. Real easy to do. Um, right now I'm just kind of putting back together the slide uh, for the 19 right here. And then we're going to go ahead and, and oil this and put everything back together. Uh, like I said, 
super easy to do. Uh, I probably should have a little tool here to kind of help me, but I don't, so I'm, I'm improvising. All right, so this slide is back together. Uh, and now I'm just gonna take the barrel, put that back in, put the spring back in, uh, and we're totally good to go. Now this can go back on the 19. I'm gonna take some REM oil and I'm just gonna touch it literally with like one drop, one drop, one drop, one drop, and that's it. No more than that. I mean, tiny little drop. I'm gonna put the slide on, rack it back and forth a few times, and that's totally gonna be done. Uh, right now I'm just kind of putting my other firearms back together. This is the Glock 26. Uh, I'm just gonna get this back in there and get the, uh, get the ejector in there. Get that firing pin in there. And then putting this uh, plate on here, the slide plate, uh, is always a little challenging. I, like I've said before, you really need a little uh, tool to kind of compress everything. Uh, I put the screwdrivers away, so I'm just going to kind of use my fingernail and the firing pin uh, of another gun to, to do this. All right, so that's back together. That is uh, the way it should be. Barrel in. The spring is in. And then we got our last one here, the, the Glock 43. And unfortunately, I've been using parts uh, to kind of push the back plate back on. I might have to get up and get a screwdriver uh, to do this the correct way. But let's see. Let's see if I could do it without a screwdriver. Not, not so sure I can. Got a screwdriver real quick. I got a screwdriver, so it's going to be a little bit easier for me to uh, reassemble everything here. Uh, just because you do need something to kind of push this down to get the back plate back on. So for those of you guys at home that can't really see this on the video, I just want you to trust me that. You definitely need a little bit of a tool here uh, to kind of get everything back in. There we go. All right, so the Glock 43 uh, is now back together. Now back together. So basically the very last step here, I'm just gonna take my oil and you definitely do not want to put too much oil. You're literally just gonna take a drop. And when I say a drop, I mean a single drop. And I put it in four places here on the, on the lower. I'm gonna take my slide. Line this up. I'm gonna kind of rack it back and forth a few times to, to work that oil in. And that's it, it's totally done. I'm gonna do the same now with the Glock 26. I'm just gonna put four tiny, tiny drops of oil. And that's it, you definitely don't need to over oil this. Uh, don't go crazy at all. And then you should be good to go. So I hope 
uh, that you guys have found this video helpful. I tried not to make it uh, too long. I did some of the parts off of video uh, just because I don't want to sit here and waste everyone's time uh, watching me clean it with a piece of paper towel uh, or Q-tips. Uh, but that's it. That is how you take apart and clean a Glock. Uh, I did not clean the trigger assembly. I did not take any of that apart. Uh, generally speaking, you don't really need to do that. Um, I've actually only had to do that once on a, on a very old Glock that was built in. Um, but I hope this has helped. If you guys enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate it if you like and subscribe. Uh, and if you do something different that you think is better, leave it in the comment section. I read all your comments uh, and anything you want to see, let me know. Thank you.